Okay, so uh, I'm going to introduce you to my uh, pinning techniques. Um, I use a, a like a double pin system. I call it a double pin system. I don't know if there's a double pin system, but I'm focusing on two parts of the body, and I tend to go across this way, and I tend to go across this way. And most of my game is about crushing and making pain feel uncomfortable when I'm in side control. So we're moving away from the traditional kind of Nogi methodology, and we're looking at kind of a more crush and dominate cat thrusting kind of methodology. So again I've landed and I've passed his guard. I like to start here. It's kind of feels natural to me. Already I'm gonna change my technique slightly. I, I know his rib cage is here. So what I do is I take my rib cage and I bury my rib cage underneath his rib cage. I'm already putting pressure underneath and onto his diaphragm. My hip bone is slightly lifted off the ground and it's pressured onto his hip bone. So I can feel his hip bone and I can feel his diaphragm. He's already starting to slowly start to feel. He's feeling uncomfortable, let's put it that way. I don't really care what this arm does because I'm just going to smoosh it. If it does anything, basically, I'm going to smoosh it. So I'm going to go underneath here and I hook on the top of his shoulder and I pull that toward me. Okay, so I'm pulling his shoulder off the ground and I'm like pulling it toward me and I put my head onto the shoulder. And then on top of that, I'm going to crush his rib cage because I'm going to turn my hips over now and I'm going to push into him. So you can see that I'm actually using friction in the ground for my feet to push into him. My knees are off the ground and I'm controlling him. This is a really difficult position for Graham to maintain. It's so not comfy. I don't control the head. Right? This is for doing other stuff with, for controlling, for basing out, for putting here. And this is my main kind of control. He can do what he wants with this arm, all right? It doesn't really bother me. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to go underneath his diaphragm, trying to lift his shoulder, and trying to put pressure in that direction. If things happen and I have to move around, all I'm going to do is I'm going to react to that by changing where my body goes. So I go over the top of the head and into the shoulder. I lift the shoulder nice and tight again. I keep loads of pressure on Graham's chest. I'm going to sit my chest out in this direction again, smearing into the ground. This hand has come across and gone onto the ground. My fingertips have gone underneath the ground bit. Again, smearing into the ground in this direction. I've got wrestling boots on. This is a complete nightmare for Graham. If he gets an underhook, it doesn't really matter. If he gets an underhook when you've got a BJJ side control, he can escape quite easily. With this kind of side control, he can have an underhook, but he's still got to get his uh, shoulder through my chest. So he's got to drive towards me and turn over. I'm not going to let him do that. I'm going to keep my heart on his heart and I'm going to push him there. And he's having difficulty breathing, and it's not a nice place to be. Very different than this. This is great in that it allows him space to do things and it allows him to attack lots of different things. This for me is much better because I'm compressing him. I'm making his life very miserable. And when your teacher, your coach, is making your life miserable with the amount of pressure that they're doing, they're not doing the traditional knee next to your head thing. They're doing complete pressure onto your chest. You just want to give up just from the fact that they're lying on the 